Let's move on to the big cycling news of the week then. Chris Froome has been cleared by the UCI of doping violations after being over the permitted salbutamol levels at the Vuelta. The World Anti-Doping Agency confirmed that while one of Froome's urine samples did exceed the permitted levels, it was satisfied that it did not constitute an adverse analytical finding. Uh, former water scientist Ken Fitch says the test's not reliable, so is it not fit for purpose? Well, apparently not. That's what they say. I mean, um, and apparently it hasn't been for a while, and apparently this and apparently that. And, you know, it's kind of everyone's coming out now and giving these kind of opinions, and um, the, just the, the confusion it adds to the whole case is just, I mean, there's so much noise out there at the moment on in, on social media and in the news, and it's really difficult to, to, to get to the root of it as to what the actual facts are. But I think from what I can make out, the only thing we really know is... Chris was given, uh, from what I heard this morning, it wasn't even an adverse analytical finding. It didn't even go to that stage. You know, he was asked to explain himself, which he, he got given due process in order to do that. And he was cleared by the people that run our sport and our, you know, the doping agency to race. And that's all we know. And I think other than that, you have to respect the fact that he's allowed to race. And I think, you know, he should be allowed to race in a safe environment because, you know, he's getting all sorts of abuse and stuff at the moment. And, um, you know, I think that no athlete sh deserves to ride under that that amount of, you know, have his safety questioned at the world's biggest sporting event. And, and without the leak, we, we wouldn't know. Well, we wouldn't even know about it, no. Which has, has that inadvertently, uh, has the leak shone a light on something that well, isn't yeah. right in the sport? I, I mean, I think so, but that's the nature of everything now. I think things get leaked, you know, people are always out to... I, 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 for a start, I don't think it would have been leaked. Had it not been Chris Froome, it wouldn't have been leaked. We wouldn't have heard about it. Someone saw an opportunity there, whoever it may be, one of the big organisations, one of the big players, one of the big, you know, parties in this case, um, maybe did it to get one over on someone else or, you know, to, to make happen what has happened, you know, since it was announced last December, whenever it was... And it has big. It has overshadowed the sport all year. It's been the biggest news story, uh, running side by side with the sport at every event. But the decision's made now, and he's in the Tour de France, and he's in with a shout of winning his fifth Tour de France. So. What will it do to him? Do you think? Well, earlier in the year, I thought it might actually have an effect on him, but he's been. Uh, he's managed to rise above it, stay pretty dignified through the whole thing, and won a historic Giro d'Italia. And I wouldn't put it past him to, to, you know, certainly to try and to win the Tour de France here. I mean, he's still, for me, the favourite to win the Tour de France. Um, and, you know, he's, he's proved in the past that he can deal with whatever's thrown at him. How do you see it, Molly, that all, all that's been thrown at Froome and, and yet he still proves that he's, he's a rider of top quality? Yeah, I think for me it shows his strength as an athlete. I think I mm. thought the same before the Giro. I thought, I don't see how he's going to be on on form and how he's going to have been able to train through this and because I think as an athlete I thought the mental sort of ramifications of that and even the disruption to to training to tra you know it must have been actually a difficult time to prove your innocence you have to put work into that but I think you know I would have found it really difficult to keep training at the same level and so I think it does really show his strength and like personality to be able to keep going like you know he was there on stage getting booed and he just rides yeah. the wave of that and he, he takes it in his stride almost and he's very dignified in it. It's, it'd be easy for him to like, just start shouting about it and make a massive issue of it, but actually he's sort of trying to rise above it and I think I respect that massively in him. Why do you think he's been acquitted and other rider, riders haven't been so lucky? Well, obviously they've got resource. You know, He's got the financial resource. He's in the biggest team in the world and you know, I think there was some criticism launched at him for having financial backing in order to, to pursue this but ultimately that came against him it got leaked into the public domain which he shouldn't have done and as an athlete he wanted to clear his name so of course he's gonna if he's innocent of something or he feels he's innocent of something as he said all along he's gonna throw whatever he can at it to clear his name and I think he's every right to be able to do that and the team have supported him because they obviously backed him and, and you know trusted him and knew um, that he hadn't done anything wrong. So I, I don't see that as a criticism of him, really. I mean, this day and age, you know, it, it costs money to get a legal team. It costs money to get experts. And with something that we're told is as complicated as, you know, the salbutamol taste, test, it's not black and white. You know, you need you need good experts to invalidate the test to show that, the, you know, that you could have an, uh, you know, something like this come up in your urine. So, you know, he's managed to do that. And in some ways... He's now set a precedent. If someone does 
you know, going this Tour de France for Selbutamol, he's already proved that you can undermine the test. 